This right here is the Terramaster D1 SSD Plus. Basically, this is an external SSD enclosure that you can use for storing your files, documents, or even use this as your backup drive. And Terramaster was kind enough to send me one example to test out and review for this channel. So what's so good about this drive? There are a variety of different SSD enclosures that are out there. So why is Terramaster D1 better or how does it stand out? Well, let's find out. First up is the design. By far, this looks quite unique when compared to the competition. And secondly, that this is a lot, you know, on the cheaper side when compared with other external SSD enclosures. For example, the Zyke Z666 or the OWC external drives go for over $120, whereas you can pick this one up at the time of this recording for around $99 with an $11 coupon. So overall, it's a good bargain. On top of that, this does have faster read write speeds. When I tested this, it ran around 3000 megabytes per second read and 3000 megabytes per second write speeds. As for setup, you can easily set this up. Setting this drive up is quite simple. So all you gotta do is take out this screw that's back here and then open it up like so and then just like that, it comes out. Installing your NVMe SSD is quite simple and straightforward. All you gotta do is just place it in and then tighten that screw up and that's it. Once it's all done, you just put it back together like so and tighten the screw. And that's it, it's all set and ready to go. Plug into your next laptop or you know Mac mini or even a Windows PC and it works just fine. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and connect our Terramaster D1 with my MacBook Pro. So in your case, if you're using Mac, that's great. If you're using Windows, it should be a straight plug and play. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this. And then by default, it's showing up for me. And by the way, for my drive, I'm using Samsung uh, 990 EVO Plus drive for this setup. So do keep in mind, uh, if you use different NVMe SSDs, you might get different speeds or you know different experience overall. All right, so if you're connecting this for the very first time, you should get a pop-up saying that you need to format your drive. Since I've done this several times before, I'm not getting that message, but just to walk everyone through the process, click on your search and spotlight search and then do disk utility. Once you have that open, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my Samsung 990 EVO Plus and then hit erase. And then give it a name, so I'll call this Samsung 990 EVO Plus. Okay, now format. Now APFS works great if you have a Mac OS system but in my case, I plan on using this between Windows and my Mac. So the idea would be to transfer files over from my Mac Pro to my Windows PC. So I'm gonna be using XFAT because that works with all the systems. But if you only intend on using with a Mac, then I would recommend using APFS file system. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit erase and it's gonna format the drive and then remount it. All right, now that we can see it, my drive is ready and it's available in the corner. Next thing I'm gonna do is run a disk speed test. And for that, I'm using Blackmagic disk speed test. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and then click on settings, select my target drive, click on the Samsung 990 and then hit open. And here I'm gonna click on start speed test and as you can see, I'm getting around 2300 write and 2900 read. So this is very different than what I was expecting. All right, so I wasn't expecting the write speeds to be that less. So what we're gonna try and do next is reformat the drive, but then use APFS file system. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and go to disk utility, find my Samsung drive and then hit erase and then choose APFS file system, and I'll do Samsung 990 
and then hit erase. All right, it's been formatted using the APFS file system. Now we're gonna go back and then click on select a target drive, choose Samsung again, and then hit start and see what the speed test does this time. And right off the bat, the write speeds are a lot higher, almost getting 2,900 write and 3,050 read speeds. Now, if I keep letting this run for a few minutes, we can see that it's crossing 2,900 write and 3,000 read. So basically on the synthetic benchmark test, you're almost hitting 3,000 write and 3,000 read speeds, which is pretty good. So after running the test for a while, I did get 3,013 write speeds and 3,076 read speeds. So overall on both read and write, this drive is going well over 3,000 megabytes per second, which is pretty awesome. None of my other drives that I have have done that so far. All right, with that being said, let's do an actual uh, data transfer and see what the real world speeds are like. All right, for this test, I'm gonna move one of my uh, folders that contains around 31 gigabytes of, you know, uh, movies and files and whatnot. So I'm gonna go ahead. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my folder that I wanna move over to my Samsung and then start my speed test. All right, so that moved around 31 gigabytes of files in under 10 seconds. So if, so if you do the math, we are getting around 3,184 megabytes per second of write speeds. Now let's try and do this the other way, which is copy that same file over onto our desktop. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy the file, move it onto my desktop and start my stopwatch. All right, so it took around the same 10 second mark. So honestly speaking, the read and write speeds are pretty much right on point on, on this drive. So after doing the synthetic and the actual test, this drive is quite fast with over 3000 megabytes per second read speeds and 3000 megabytes per second write speeds. So overall, very fast and efficient drive. I do think the thermal throttling is an issue but for my use cases, which is just moving around 30 to 40 gigabytes of files from my MacBook Pro to my Windows PC or vice versa, I don't seem to have that many issues. Now I did transfer like over 200 gigabytes of different files or projects that I have. And at that point I did notice thermal throttling as you know, the speeds did started getting capped towards the end of the process. And thermal throttling is gonna be a problem for you know these external drives because they do not contain a fan. We are relying on the you know heat sink of the drive itself to cool down the drive. The only time you will not notice thermal throttling is when you have a fan that's included in the uh, SSD enclosure. So this one does not have it, and you know that's fine with me. All right. So what are some of the use cases for this drive? In my use cases, you know, I have been using this as my time machine backup and it's working fine there. I also tried using, you know, this as my external storage drive when I'm on the go, when I'm traveling somewhere, I can put all my raw files that I can easily edit while I'm, you know, traveling somewhere. When I have free time, I can use this. So editing videos right off of this SSD is pretty good for me so far without any issues. I didn't notice any thermal throttling for the most part. You know, overall it's very nice. You know, you can carry it with you wherever you go, but I have been primarily using this, you know, with my MacBook Pro. I am running out of storage recently, so I have been using this drive as my main uh, editing disc, you could say. So I put all my videos and contents, my basically my raw files on this device and then I use my DaVinci Resolve to edit videos right off of the SSD. And it's been working wonders for me, really. It's working very, very good. So yeah, that's it for the review. Overall, you know, this drive is very impressive. This is giving me over 3000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. And my synthetic benchmarks were pretty much identical to my, you know, real world use case benchmarks. So. Overall, I'm very impressed with this drive. I do highly recommend that you check it out. I'll link it in the description below if you wanna pick one up for yourself. And do remember that I paired this with the Samsung Evo 990 Plus drive. And overall, that's a very good package that works together. Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
and I'll see you in my next video. Do remember to like this video and subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in my next one.